faithful God, the firstborn of all creation. Hope was before all things, and over all things he reigns. Hope has set a date when he will someday return and unite us with him for all eternity. Oh, how my heart rejoices in the Lord, my King of hope. Morning and night, his love and hope whisper my name, and reminding me that I am his. This hope and grace in him abounds towards me and proves itself to be greater than even my worst sins. Hope has marked me as his own and welcomed me into his presence. Hope has overwhelmed me with the greatness of his love, for I have found mercy and grace at the feet of the cross. So with a heart filled with hope, let my words be few. For the words I speak are not merely words. You see, my words point to the living word, and the word has a name. Love has a name. Joy has a name. Peace has a name. Life has a name. Hope has a name. And that name is Jesus Christ. The Word, a spoken word written by Isaac Wimberly. If there are words for him, then I don't have them. You see, my brain has not yet reached the point where it could form a thought that could adequately describe the greatness of my God and my lungs have not yet developed the ability to release a breath with enough agility to breathe out the greatness of his voice. And my voice, you see, my voice is so inhibited, restrained by human limits, that it is hard to even send the praise up. You see, if there are words for him, then I don't have them. My God, his grace, remarkable, mercies, innumerable, strength is impenetrable. He is honorable, accountable, favorable. He is unsearchable, yet knowable, undefinable, yet approachable, indescribable, yet personal. He is beyond comprehension, further than imagination, constant through generations, king of every nation, but if there are words for him, then I don't have them. You see, my words are few, and in trying to capture the one true God, using my vocabulary would never do, but I use words as an expression, an expression of worship to a savior, a savior who is woeth worthy and deserving of my praise. So I use words. My heart extols the Lord, blesses his name forever. He has won my heart, captured my mind, and has bound them both together. He has defeated me in my rebellion, conquered me in my sin. He has welcomed me into his presence, completely invited in. He has made himself the object of my sight flooding me with mercies in the morning, drowning me with grace in the night. But if there are words for him, then I don't have them. But what I do have is good news. For my God knew that man-made words would never do. The words are just tools that we use to point to the truth. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, as the word, living proof. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created, giving nothingness, formation. And by his word, he sustains in the power of his name, for he is beyond before all things and over all things he reigns holy is his name so i praise him for his life the way he persevered in strife the humble son of god becoming the perfect sacrifice praise him 
for his death, that he willingly stood in our place, that he lovingly endured the grave, that he battled our enemy, and on the third day rose in victory. For one day he will return for us, and we will finally be united with our Savior for eternity, eternity. So it's not just words that I proclaim, for my words point to the word, and the whole word has a name. Hope has a name. Joy has a name. Peace has a name. Love has a name. And that name is Jesus Christ. Praise his name forever. Praise the Lord. My name is Austin Rumoran. My name is Marvelous Rumoran. And we'll be presenting a rendition of Proverbs chapter 1. You can follow with your Bibles, but if you may, please open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 1 and listen and be blessed. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall obtain into wise counsel. To understand a proverb, the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For it shall be an ornament of grace upon thine head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one foot. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood and live privily for their own love. And so is the way of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the lives of the owners thereof. Wisdom, Wisdom crieth it out. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the street place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long these simple ones will love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scornings, and fools say knowledge. Turn ye at my reproof, behold, I'll pour out my spirit unto you. I'll make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. For ye have set at naught on my counsel and were none of my reproofs. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as a desolation and destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon thee, then they shall call me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they had hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. For they were none of my counsel and despised all my reproofs. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own ways and be filled with their own vices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth me shall dwell safely and be quiet from fear of evil. Amen.
Praise the Lord. If you are clapping for them, that's good enough. But if you are clapping for Jesus that has used them, let the clap be better than that. Let it be better than that. Let it be better than that. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for our children. We have a future in this church. That amen is not good enough. I said we have a future in this church. And the Lord will continue to use them for his glory in Jesus' name. Remember, remember, remember God has given them to us for signs and wonders. And signs and wonders will they do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank the Lord for that has helped us thus far. And by God's grace, this service will be having an update on missions. God has been using our Father in the Lord. God has sent him to Asia, and God has been using him mightily. And as the people of God, it's good for us to hear what God has been doing, even through his ministry, even through what he is doing in the Philippines. And I want you all to rise up as we welcome our Father, our region overseer, international evangelist, Pastor Michael Dada, as he comes forward. Let's welcome him. Let's welcome him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise in the Lord. Praise in the Lord. Praise in the Lord. We told my heart. Praise in the Lord with all my heart, always. Alleluia. 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 Father, we are grateful unto you for your faithfulness. We thank you because the people you have called are those you have appointed. And those that you have appointed are those that you have glorified. We thank you for your call upon our lives, your grace upon our lives, your mercy and your kindness. Thank you, Father, for using us at this point in time in the history of the world. Use us the more, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. You may uh, have your seat. We are talking about the mission. And uh, before I get to the foreign mission, let me talk about the home mission because this is our home here. No matter what part of the world you came from, for as long as you are here, this is your home. And I want to say that whatever God is doing, now is something he has started from time immemorial. I would want to bless his holy name for his goodness and faithfulness. I'll begin from the time. You know, we, we don't keep history. And um, it's very, very bad of us as Africans, if I may put it that way. And so after a period of time, we don't remember what has happened because there is no documentation in any way or form. 
I came to the country 1995, July 1995. And by March of 1996, I was uh, transferred from New York to Atlanta, Georgia. At that time, the church, we were renting from Seventh-day Adventist Church, um, uh, a facility, their chapel. And the, the church was small, deeper life, and America wasn't that wasn't as many as we are right now. Everybody struggling, thank God for the founding fathers of the Deeper Life Church in the United States. Let's put our hands together for that. <laughs> no matter what has happened, please learn to appreciate the people that God has used, people that have been before you, people that uh, began tilling the ground, digging the ground, and putting blocks on the floor. Uh, they began the work before you came, and I really want to appreciate God for people like that that God sent ahead of me. Well, um, I took over the church in Georgia, just one church, and um, within six months of getting there, I knew God has gotten a work to do. And the church has been there for years, struggling and having crisis upon crisis, almost to the point of being shut down. When God spoke to the leader then, send them there. And I got there, March 96. By September 1996, we bought our church building. Amen. And that was just about one year and two months old in America. And uh, we were there to God's glory. We began to move the church, of course. Finance was challenging. Uh, nobody thought it was ever going to happen. Before then, we were to buy a computer. It was, uh, it was a big deal for us to buy a computer. And that was when uh, Windows just came out. And uh, it took raising fund and raising fund and raising fund to raise $3,000 to buy a computer at that time. It was very expensive. And uh, the computer had one gig. <laughs> now you know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. And uh, it was a big deal. We were happy. But again, praise the Lord, we bought the property and um, uh, we started working on the church, the finances of the church. It was tough and challenging. I need to share this with you so that if you are going through anything in your life, the God you are serving is a living God. Yeah. And is able to do all things in Jesus' name. It's so, it, before we bought it, people said it's impossible, but to God's glory, it became possible. Now, how do we fund it? How do we finance it? We couldn't pay $500 for our rent, and now our mortgage then will became $1,500. How do we do it? It was tough, but this is the miracle I want to tell you. That whenever it became almost completely impossible for us to pay for that month, somebody will show up at the door of the church yeah. with an envelope and hand it over to whoever is the first, is the usher there. And by the time we open it, it's going to be a check for $2,000. We needed $1,500, but $2,000 will always come. When things seem to be okay, we're able to uh, add things together. This person will not show up, but any month that became very, very tough and challenging, he shows up again. Pastor Albert, are you in the house? Where are you? Praise the Lord. He's one of my ushers that time. Praise the Lord. And uh, they will bring the envelope and say, Pastor, who is the man? He has gone. And that happened and happened and happened until we became okay to take care of our bills. Our God is a miracle worker. Praise the Lord. And the time came that um, the place was going to become a desert area. God thought of it ahead of time. And then he sent the city of Atlanta to come and said, we need your property. And uh, that was my baby. I was passionate for that building. It was my first project in America. How can I let go? It was like my first child was going to die. I'm telling you the truth. People don't know. And I fought it, and I fought it. And eventually, the city said, well, if you're not let go, then we're going to use the law of eminent domain. That was my first time of hearing the law of eminent domain. What is eminent domain? So I have to go and research. It means the government has a right to take your property 
for as long as it's going to be for the benefit of the masses, the public. And you have no say. Anyway, I negotiated with them. We bought the property for 200000 by the grace of God. Uh, Dr. Ago is not here. Uh, Pastor Gwenga is still here. Is Pastor Gwenga in the house? <laughs> praise, the, praise the Lord. Uh, I fought and fought and fought. Uh, they said they're going to pay you 300000 I said 300000 There is nothing like that. We fought, it became 400, it became 500, it became 600,000. At the end of the day, I think I got about 700,000 from them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So don't give up, keep on fighting. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so we finally bought our church in Georgia right now, where we have, and uh, we were able to put down uh, some money, right? Praise the Lord. We pay off the bank, and then from the balance, we put down 350000 uh, One of our churches, I won't tell you, that was having issue, you see, from having nothing. Uh, having nothing. I was able to give them $50,000. Praise the Lord. Because they were having trouble in their own state at that time. It's a different region. To cut a long story short, exactly seven years after I was there in uh, Georgia, uh, the Lord spoke to the GS to bring me to Washington. Long story, we don't need the story right now. Washington was at a point of, you can call it a deplorable state. There were challenges in the church, crisis in the church, confusion in the church. Many left the church already. We came to start rebuilding, and uh, the church where we were then became the regional headquarter for the church. Can you show us the picture of our regional headquarter back then? Media department. That is our regional headquarter. Put your hands together for the Lord. It is a house that we combine the living room the kitchen, amen, uh, which other place, uh, the pastor before me, God used him to procure that, and that was a big deal as at that point in time. It took faith on the part of that pastor to be able to procure this. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. <laughs> you, you won't understand because you came to America at the time that things are good. That was a time that life was tough and terrible. That was a time that would even eat. I told you yesterday that for five years, Washington couldn't pay me. He was in that church for, I think, about nine years. The church could not pay him. Those of us that have been here, we've been through things. I mean, we not labor in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And uh, today, by the grace of God, um, I told them at that time, I said, this place is too small for us. If you put normal chairs like this, the place would take less than 100 people. But we had really small chairs that we finally, that includes all the ones we put on the stage, all the electronics departments. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, to cut a long story short, We had not filled up the place, but I said, this place is too small for us. The brethren looked at me and said, Pastor, where are the people? They are coming. In Jesus' name. Where is the money? It is coming in Jesus' name. We trusted the Lord for bigger things. Amen. I need to share all this with you, those of you online, those of you in your various churches, those of you that are here with me, so that you can know that you can move and rise above your limitation. No matter the limitation you have, I'm going to preach on that later on. Uh, I told them we can do it. Pastor, how do we do it? I don't know how we're going to do it, but I know somebody who knows how we're going to do it. His name is Jesus. And we began to search and search eventually. We got this property, amen, 
Um, the, um, the first time I said I was not ready to commit suicide, so we left. Amen. After one year, God spoke to me, go back to that place. I came back here. Long story. Today, by God's grace, this is our regional headquarters. Shall we see the building? We can't even see anything. Uh, okay, it's better here than what I'm seeing over there. Praise the Lord. And this is our regional headquarter right now in Washington, D.C., to God's glory. And uh, from there, other churches, other regions coming here, seeing what the Lord has done, uh, began to trust God for a miracle. When God does his work in your life, you become a living testimony for other people. Because he's going to do it for you in Jesus' name. So the mission work began from here, and then we began the planting of the church. Remember, the church here was in crisis. The church was in trouble. The church was collapsing. Many left the church, and um, to God's glory, God revived the church. He used different people at different times. God revived the church. And the members of the church, to God's glory, that have been at loggerheads together, against one another, God united them together. We began to work as a family. Where there is unity, there will be progress. Where there is unity, the power of God will be made manifest in a supernatural way in Jesus' name. I need to tell you, here in Washington, the other building we just show you, we we're paying $1,040. Pastor Claudius was my office manager. He was the accountant general. He was, he was the everything. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and he is here at a point. We couldn't pay him. I don't get paid. Uh, but I ensured that he was getting paid. But at a point, we couldn't pay him. And so I said, Pastor, uh, he wasn't a pastor then. Uh, Brother Claudius, please, you need to go and look for another job. Because I cannot afford for you to be working for the church unpaid. Not everybody can do what I am doing. I won't do it to you. Thank God he understood because he handles the account and everything. He began to look for a job. He found the job. And uh, he picked up the job, but he was still working for church now for free. And up to today, he's still working for the church. Put your hands together for the Lord. Many people today, the way he works, they think he's a full-time worker in the church. They don't know that he's a just volunteer worker like everybody. Morning, afternoon, night, he's always here. I celebrate you. God bless you. May the Lord give you, as a leader, men and women whose heart the Lord has touched. May the Lord give you people that will not walk against you. May the Lord give you your Aaron and your all that will lift up your hand. May the Lord give you people that will not put you down but lift you up. In Jesus' name. God has given me such men and women in this church. And I cannot be grateful enough to the king of glory. Amen. Amen. We started church planting and going from one church, keep multiplying and multiplying, and God give people again, I'll put here, and then go to other places, go plant the church. Once it is settled, hand it over, come back home. Today, we have tens of pastors in our region. Tens of churches in our region. And we have our pastors meeting from time to time, wherein we develop one another. We charge one another, encourage one another, steer up the strength, the grace, and the gift of God in us. And everybody began to strive in their own various areas of ministry. The mission work began from here. And to God's glory, I can tell you that in the nation of America, in this region, we have quite a lot of our church locations that have been able to procure their own building. Going from zero to hero, from minimum to the maximum. I mention the name of the state. The Lord is doing great and mighty things in Jesus' name. In your personal life, he will do it in Jesus' name. And then came the time 
You know, First Samuel chapter seven verse twelve says, "He that told the Lord has helped us, and um, as He's helping us, He will continue to help us." Then the mandate came again to move from here to the Philippines. I won't get into all the stories. And then getting to Philippines, knowing nobody. Just like we have done here in the United States. Going from place to place, from state to state, knowing nobody. Just going, trusting the Lord. And God going ahead of us. These signs shall follow them that believe. God working things out and connecting us with people and starting the church and multiplying the churches everywhere that we go because the just shall live by faith. Eventually, I got to the Philippines uh, last year, May, the first time I went there to survey the land, just like the spies went to Canaan land. And I was there for two weeks and then prayed and I came back. And then June last year, I went back and I said to myself, how am I going to begin without having a place I can invite people to? And so we rented a place. And to God's glory, um, the people began to come. And we had our first crusade over there. I don't remember the figure right now. I didn't think of that, so I don't want to give you any false figure. But I think we should be between two and 300 in attendance at that crusade. Maybe a little more, I don't remember now. Uh, within a few months of getting there, and people began to come to the church. And we got to 50, 70, and I think at a point, uh, I don't remember all the figures now, but we, the place where we were renting was only to sit about 25 People maximum 30 feet, so tight. We moved to another place that can sit up to 50, 60. We, give me the word now. We, the place got filled up. And so we had to go to a restaurant uh, where uh, Pastor Chuba and Pastor Dan came to meet us when they visited us in the Philippines uh, early part of this year. And to cut a long story short, we continue to labor and to minister in a strange land. Remember, going there knowing nobody. The first person I met there was a driver that picked me up. I never met him in history in the world. And uh, today, we have tens of people that are members of the church right now. Can you, um, good enough, just today, they sent me the picture. I didn't ask for it. They sent me the picture. Whenever I'm not around, they want me to know what is going on there. They give me detail of everything, and they send me a picture of what happened at church today. Media department, can you please let us see? That is Deeper Life Bible Church. Can you play that again? Let them hear. That's what they did in church today. They almost bring me to tears. Praise God. And um, I was also told a few young people came and uh, they couldn't find, they've not been coming to church. Their parents won't allow them to come. And so they came on their own privately and said, please tell Pastor Dada we love him. We love to come to this church. It's just our parents that will not allow us to come. 
Uh, that is what the Lord is doing for us in the Philippines. Praise the Lord. That is possible because of you. Because of you. Because of you. If I go there and I don't have your backing and your support, both morally and financially, nothing will be done. The mission work needs money to be able to be successful. A lot has happened over there. And to God's glory, I can tell you that the money you are sending to us is getting things accomplished in Jesus' name. I have not had it in the history of our church that within a short time, in less than one year, of going to a mission field, you are able to buy a property. For the sake of those that didn't know, please, can you show us our building in the Philippines right now? That actually, that is where I live. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's our church building there. Uh, actually, one, two, three, the fourth level is an open terrace where you can have meetings, do um, special events, gathering, and all the rest. Uh, they do that over there. And then we have the second building. We actually have two buildings. Where's the second one? Okay. Put your hands together for the Lord. Now, the building was at this level when we bought it. Right now, we are doing construction work. That's why you see this going on. And this is going to, I think, three or four levels also. Praise the Lord. This is where we use for, for church. You can see the name of the church there, Deep Alive Bible Church, uh, over there. And um, work is going on. The city is involved. The county is involved. A lot of inspection work is going on as you move on, on and on. And I really want to thank the Lord again for uh, each and every one of you and for our planning committee. They are working day and night to ensure that they are on top of everything. We bless the Lord for everything that the Lord is doing and the Lord will continue to do in Jesus' name. A few months ago, two months ago to be precise, um, when did we have our Indian crusade? Oh, last month. Oh, it's not two months then. Uh, last month, just before the Indian crusade, we organized a pastor's and minister's conference. And um, because the GS had told me of his plan to come to the Philippines and to see what I can do. I'm still very new there. I'm still a foreigner. But with God, all things are possible. So I took the challenge, and what do we do? Began to talk with people, and the pastors there, some of them, leader of one of them, leader of is it 50,000 50, congregations nationwide. I sat down with him, I spoke with him, I spoke with some other leaders, and they said, Pastor, to do this kind of program will take you between six months and one year. To cut a long story short, uh, we put things together. Within three weeks, we had a program. <laughs> and uh, can you show some of the pictures from the minister's conference? That's the minister's conference we had over there. We, I put it at 800 in attendance based on the program we printed and what remained, but people said we actually more than 1,000 in attendance. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, go ahead. I know voice.
Praise the Lord. Um, the few days before the program, I was able to meet with the mayor of the city of Tatai where we had a program. Um, I'm not sure if that picture is there with you, media department. Okay, this is the mayor of the city. Amen. And then they presented me and those that came with me with the cup uh, from the city, with the city information there. Uh, that's the mayor. These are members of the church. Uh, this is not our member, but working with us for the preparation for the crusade. And so these are some of the things that the Lord is doing over there in the Philippines. And uh, again, I told you before, from the Philippines, it's been challenging going beyond Philippines because of not having uh, somebody that can really, really man the place. So I have to be sure I don't go away too far from them. But of course, by God's grace, we've been able to move to Hong Kong to start the Palai Bible Church <laughs> in Hong Kong. And uh, we're going to be having our retreat, December retreat in Hong Kong uh, next week. By the grace of God. Uh, because I'm not there, Philippines will do it at another time uh, later on. Um, we've been to Singapore, um, connecting with somebody in Singapore. Coming here, by the grace of God, we're going to start something in Singapore. <laughs> I'm already talking with some people in Japan. Uh, next year, I'm trusting the Lord for open door and breakthrough for us in Japan. Uh, we have something going on in South Korea, by God's grace. Uh, there, is, uh, there are people God has used in South Korea, but they are scattered all over. I've not really been there. I've only passed through South Korea, but visiting the church, I was told in uh, Seoul, uh, nothing is really there because people are just like one person in this state, another person in another state. Once in a while, they all come together, stay over. I've not been there, so but we're trusting God that this coming year, we'll be able to do something more meaningful in South Korea also in Jesus' name. Um, actually, the GS wants me to really be there for some other deeper assignments. Uh, Miami, um, I've not been there, but I learned something is going on. I don't know the extent of it. I, again, different countries in Southeast Asia, um, there is no way, I want to keep saying that, all this would have been possible without God and without you. Amen? And so I want to say thank you for each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. I think I'm done with the assignment they gave me. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. God is good. It's wonderful to be in the house of God on Sunday mornings like this and to be witnessing the great move of God in our lifetime. Amen? It can only be God. It can only be God. You know, and I really want to thank God very much for our arrow. It has some kind of mountain moving faith. It's like he doesn't see to see the impossible, you know. And you can have money. You can have a well-funded mission. But when you don't have a solid man that has the vision, the know-how, the grace, the move, nothing will happen. You know, and so to God be the glory for all that he has done using him in Jesus' name. And honestly, I want to say thank you 
to the church here in our region. You, like you said, you are the reason things are moving well. The fact that you are willing to give, you are willing to give and keep giving, we want to say thank you. You know, I think it was a year ago that we as a church, remember that Zoom time when we tried to raise money for mission and we were calling her names and his name. Faithful men, faithful pastors, faithful churches that we say we don't want to disturb the brethren. We don't want to, you know, brethren are trying. The churches are trying. And the arrow in its wisdom, we say, look, let's just ask for volunteer pastors, volunteer churches that can give us some money in order to do this. And a good number of the time, he has refused that we will not make this a public announcement. Because even this thing that I'm about to do now, he, we have to persuade him because he said, brethren, I don't want us when we come for regional events, combined services, we are trying to tell people about money, that he doesn't settle well with him. And we persuaded him and said, pastor, if we don't let our brethren know the problem that we're going through and how this mission work is increasing. It's not just Philippines. It's Singapore. It's South Korea. It's Japan. Okay? And we don't want to limit the blessing of the people of God to a limited churches, the limited people. We want to just throw it to the brethren so that they will be open to give unto the Lord in this mission work. Praise the Lord. And, and so we persuaded him just last night for him to agree for us to do this. And to be honest with you, it's, it's not just giving. It's not just that the pastors and the brethren, personally, we are called and we are giving for so many things. But sometimes he gets so tight that he gives thousands of his own personal money for that work. You know, we are grateful, sir. Thank you very much. And may the Lord remember you for good. Remember your family for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, brethren, to be honest with you, I'm happy to be in this region. Because it's not just about mission. It's about your giving spirit. Because whether we are giving for DLL, DLICC, Check it out. We give extensively. Whether we are giving for GCK, this region, we give graciously. You know, whether we are giving, whatever we do, even if we... be a member of this region and a member of this church. To him be all the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brethren, this is what I want to do. It's not going to take time, okay? But I want you to be very honest. I want you to be very sincere. I'm not going to ask anybody to stand up. Well, no, this is your service, and we want to make it as sacred as it can be. Amen? Let's open our Bible to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, I read from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For, their pow for to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power 
they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we will receive the gift and to take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. I believe I'm talking to believers who had given themselves over, over unto the Lord. And so all that you are, all that you will ever be, all that you have belong unto, unto the Lord. And we are going to give a portion of that unto him. I'm going to just briefly give you a, a snapshot of what the budget for next year is. We are targeting to raise 200,000. In fact, Pastor, our accountant, I, I asked him, look, if we're going to, we need to let the people know the breakdown. What is this going to be for? What are the accounting items so that we can see? And these are some of them. If you just go, you find out that our goal is 200,000, and most of them actually is coming out of these donations from our brethren. And part of the expense item is that we have staffs now that are being paid in the church in the Philippines, all right? There are staffs that we are adding as the church is beginning to grow. Uh, we have, uh, so there's one administrative staff Exactly. I thought I, I thought I saw two. I thought we it was budgeted for two because we are paying for two currently. So there are two staffs, and then there are groceries and supplies for the church. Actually, I'm not sure if we told you the last time we every Sunday they eat food. If there is no food, the people will not come. So food is a part of this uh, strategy. So when you see grocery, it's not for pastor's house. Grocery and supplies is for the church. Amen? Uh, okay, okay, I see the other, the second admin staff here, salary. And then we have the member charity. There's a lot of uh, official work or shipping and handling. GCK, I was surprised last month or last two months when Philippines was levied 5,000 by GCK. That that's what Philippines will bring. I said, who is bringing Philippines? Philippines that we are supporting. By the way, I was shocked when I, was, when I went there and I was saying, ah, Pastor, what about, why do we carry money here to buy property? Why can't we transfer it to a bank? We don't have a bank account. So what are the, where, where are the offerings? Where does the offering money go to? The offering. There's nothing. There's no offering, no tithe. The people are not yet there. Praise the Lord. So you see, we are funding the church until the church is able to actually stand on their feet. Praise the Lord. So, um, so GCK, when they say GCK, it's part of we that is going to give GCK on behalf of the Philippines. So that's what that is. And then G GCK preparation expense. If uh, our arrow has intimated us that it's the GS desire that GCK will hold in Philippines in 2024. So right now, there are underground work and strategy and planning for that purpose. And also, uh, there's media, there's publicity, uh, there's honorarium for ministers. Like the ministers that came for the ministers' conference, there were several of them that came, you know. Those of them received honorarium. And these activities, they continue, praise the Lord. So, brethren, and there might be others at the bottom, but I just want to just give you a snapshot of what this thing, what some of those things that we are going to come uh, to. Well, the total is not, it's more than what you'll see here, okay? And then automobile experience, legal expenses, church location. What you don't see there is infrastructure. Amen? What you don't see there is infrastructure. So when I looked at this, when the accountants showed me this, I know there are a lot more that are not here. Just like we did 100, and we spent five, 600 for last year, okay? That building project that we saw, that's no, it's not accounted here as an expense. So, but we just wanted to, at least, we don't want to blow up a very big budget where it, be, it becomes uh, difficult to handle. So, we are going to, our goal for this coming year is 200,000. Praise the Lord. 
And this is what I want us to do, brethren, please. Our ushers will give us this paper. It has simple information there. So please, just take one from the usher. Just keep sharing it. It has, just put your name, your phone number, your location, and then your commitment amount. Please prayerfully put something that is generous. For example, if I want to give 10,000 or 20,000 for 22, and I can divide it over 12 years, I'm oh, sorry, 12 months, right? And then I, if, if I want to give 12,000 for 2024, it's 1,000 every month. And I can just put my commitment of that 12,000 in that, in that paper, amen? Secondly, those of us online, there is uh, a link, please, media, if you can send that link on the Zoom for those of us online so that they can click on that, on that link, and that link will still give you, the, will still ask you to provide this information, your name, your phone number, your location, and then your commitment amount. Alternatively, whether you are here or online or on Zoom, and you can hear the voice of my, you can hear me, you can also text that same information, your name, your phone number, your location, your commitment to the number that is being displayed right there, 704-577-6600, okay? Don't send money to that number. Only text your commitment to that number. If you want to send money, and thank God for some of you who want to get it over with, and you want to send it immediately, there is a Mission Zelle account. It's exclusively for our regional mission account. It's called it's DLBC Regional Missions 2022 at gmail.com. That is the Zelle account information for missions. So please, um, those of you that are looking at it, you can just take a snap of it. You can take a picture of it. Or, you, uh, or those people that are seeing it right now on their, on their Zoom, you can just uh, write it down or take a picture of it so that you can send your, commi uh, your commitment. Let me say this, brethren, please. The reason we need your commitment, if you, if you are not paying now, we want to be able to add up My God is able, abundantly able, to believe those who trust in Him. I want us to stand up as we pray right now. Pastor Glinga, please. I want you to stand up, please. You see, this, whatever we do, is a spiritual exercise. Sometimes, we cannot, by our brain, find God. We have to come by Him, come to Him by faith. The same way, when we are giving unto the Lord, uh, David wouldn't accept a free gift. He said, I cannot give an empty thing to the Lord. I want to give to the Lord even where it hurts. As we are standing up, I want you to just talk to God and say, Father, I really want to be involved. I might not be able to go to uh, Philippines or to Japan, but I want to be part of those that will support this work. Heavenly Father, please help me. I know that things 
might be difficult for me right now. But Lord, I want to commit this unto you. I'm giving you this for the propagation of the gospel of Christ and for salvation of souls in Philippines and beyond. Please, Lord, help me as I commit this amount. Write the amount that you want to commit unto the Lord and we are going to pray with you. Please don't forget to write and text it or text and give it to the usher before you leave today. Amen. We're going to still pray together for our offering, uh, for our pledges. Uh, but we're going to do beyond more than that. I want to pray for the work going on in the Philippines as well as the other areas that the Lord has sent our Father and the Lord to. We're going to pray that the work will blossom much more than what we have seen in Jesus' name. And I'm going to just take a verse of scriptures and we will leverage that. We'll stand on that as we pray. The word of the Lord says very clearly that a little one shall become a thousand. I thought I will hear a louder amen. And that also belongs to you. What you have given may look small, but God will multiply it. And for the work of the Lord in the Philippines and other areas that the Lord has committed into the hands of our Father and the Lord, a little one shall become a thousand. Um, if I hear a louder amen, I will continue the rest of the verse. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one shall become a strong nation. God will raise up a nation of deeper life in the Philippines in Jesus' name. And God says, I, the Lord, will bring it, will hasten it in his time. Somebody say in his time. Somebody say, this is the time. Somebody say, this is the time. And God will bring it to pass in Jesus' name. We're also going to pray that no weapon formed or fashioned against the work of the Lord in the Philippines will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against God set man over there and the work over there, the Lord will destroy in Jesus' name. We're going to pray. I said, we're going to pray. I said, we're going to pray. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. We will generate power as we pray here. Open your mouth and pray for the work in the Philippines. The God will move in his power. The power of God will destroy every work of the evil one. The power of God will destroy every attack of the enemy. The power of God will destroy every, every contrary spirit that wants to destabilize the work there. That what God has started will continue to blossom. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a small one, a strong nation. The God will prosper this work. God will take this work greater than what we have ever seen. Many more souls will come to know Jesus. Many more souls will come to know Jesus. By the time we hear the next update, if Jesus tarries, it will be multiplied progress. It will be multiplied progress. It will be multiplied progress. Let's stand against every power of darkness, against the progress of the walk there. The Bible says that the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. That the light of the world will prevail. The light of the world will prevail in the Philippines in Jesus' name. And other areas that our Father in the Lord has spoken about, Japan, South Korea, and other areas, Hong Kong, that God will move as well. The work will prosper much more than what we have seen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let me hear a louder, exciting amen.
We're going to pray together. Do you believe that God has answered? Do you believe that God has answered? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name because it's always a joy to call upon the name that cannot fail. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that you have never known. We thank you for your people that have committed themselves. We thank you for your people that have given unto you. We thank you for your people that have pledged to give to this great work of the great commission in the mission field, in the foreign missions, O oh God of glory. We pray that, Lord, according to your word, you will abundantly bless your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the windows of heaven will open. There will be an open heavens over their lives, open heaven over their businesses, open heavens over their career, open heavens over their finances. In the name of Jesus, Lord, much more than they have given, you will bless them in return in Jesus' name. We pray, Father God, for the, for the work in the Philippines. We come against the powers of darkness. We come against the activities of darkness. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But the Bible also tells us that we have the weapons of our warfare. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. And right now we pull down every stronghold of the enemy against the work in the Philippines, against the work in South Korea against the work in Japan, against the work in Hong Kong, and all the areas that our, our, our GS have sent our Father and the Lord to, we come against them and we pull down the strongholds in Jesus' name. We command and we decree that no weapon formed against the work will prosper. We said no weapon formed against the work will prosper. We said no weapon formed against the work will, will, will prosper. Lord, we pray now that you will scatter those that deliver light in war against this work of the God of the Lord in Jesus name. We decree a scattering of the adversary. We decree a scattering of the enemy. We decree a scattering of the work of the wicked one. In the name of Jesus we pray that this work will prosper man. We ask that Lord according to the word, a little one a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. You will hasten it in your time and this is the time. These are the days of the latter rain. When God is moving in his power again, we pray right now that the walk in the Philippines will prosper and blossom much more in Jesus' name. Multiple fold increase. Divine multiplication. We pray that there will be accelerated progress as well in Jesus' name. Open new doors. Open new doors. Open fresh does in the name of Jesus we ask that we will send more laborers faithful laborers effective laborers committed laborers into the to the work of the Lord in the Philippines in Jesus name we pray now for your son our father in the Lord your servant that you have sent over there we pray that you will multiply grace upon his life the wisdom of the Lord will increase over his life the power of the Lord will be multiplied upon on him in Jesus name he will not be tired he will not be weary he will go from grace to grace he will go from glory to glory he will go from strength to strength in the name of Jesus no weapon formed against his life will prosper every tongue that rises up against him in judgment will condemn we declare over his life that the devil has failed we declare over his life that the devil is a liar we declare over his family that the devil is a liar that the glory of the Lord will be seen oh Lord will pray it will arise and shine them all it will arise and shine them all it will arise and shine them all in the name of Jesus and Lord for the work of the Lord here in the home front we will continue to go from glory to glory this work will prosper them all in the name of Jesus thank you for the answer blessed be your holy name in Jesus mighty name we have prayed now give a louder amen to the Lord thank you sir 
Uh, please, I want to plead with everyone. Uh, those that has papers, write the name. You might be seated, please. Uh, write the amount, commitment amount, because we want to collate, start collating them now. So please, and if we get a good the number, I want to also announce to you. Wouldn't you want to hear that? All right, so please, the people online, you have the phone number where you can text those informations. The people uh, on Zoom, you have the Zoom link where you can click and enter the information on the form. Alternately, you can also text that number because we want to collate the commitment amount. So please, prayerfully, put a generous amount. Thank you very much. God bless you. morning church today we have the super life bible church youth choir of washington dc and we will be singing i believe by jonathan bless thank you
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So the young adults will be ministering a song from Psalms 8 verse 9. It says, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. And please feel free to join us with a clap of hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. It's a wonderful time being in God's presence. Amen. We, the adult choir of the Mid Atlantic region, we, the adult choir of the Mid Atlantic region, will be ministering to you. There's nothing better, nothing better than leaving for Jesus. Please listen and be blessed. Amen. Nothing better. 